Hey everyone, how's it going? GamerGeek here, and today we're talking about touch controls in Unreal Engine 4. What's the deal with touch controls and how do they work? We're going to be covering all of it, because I can tell you from experience, touch controls are a pain in your ass, and you'd rather watch shaders compile for hours rather than tinker with these nonsensical inputs in the hopes of making them work. So let's get into it, walking through how to set up touch controls in Unreal Engine. Starting off, I want to say that working with touch controls felt damn near impossible when I first started with them. There was nothing intuitive or self-explanatory about touch controls, at least to me, and it was pretty difficult to find a jumping off point for me to work with. I seriously spent hours snooping around Unreal Engine trying to figure it out for myself, which worked eventually, thank god, but it was a miserable experience. I tried to search online for help on how to figure it out, but only ever found official documentation that was severely lacking to say the least, or advice posts on forums that were several years old and also never had any valuable information. So to prevent anyone else from having to deal with this nonsense of figuring it out for themselves, I'll be covering where to find the touch control settings in Unreal Engine, how to edit them to add or customize inputs, and how to make these inputs perform action. So where do you even start when working with touch controls? After creating your Unreal Engine mobile project, go into the Edit tab, click on Project Settings, select Inputs, and then locate the touch control section in that page. From here, you can just press the small icon underneath the touch controls asset to open the touch controls folder in your content browser. Now you have easy access to organize or add assets into the folder or edit the touch controls themselves which are stored in the same directory. Now, double click on the touch controls asset which will open the menu where you'll edit all the available options and values for touch controls in your game project. From here what you do entirely depends on the needs of your project. You can tweak the default inputs Unreal Engine Mobile comes prepackaged with, which are two basic joysticks on each side of your in-game viewport, or create entirely new inputs. For this video as a demonstration, we'll be creating entirely new inputs for this project and linking them to in-game actions. Something I want to point out before I demonstrate creating the inputs is that this workflow won't ever change when working on your own projects, which is why I consider this a very important video to make. Every Unreal Engine mobile project that utilizes touch controls will follow this process to edit and add to those controls, which is why it's an extremely frustrating situation when there's no information on how to do it. So you'll see in the touch controls asset once you've opened it that we have an array plainly labeled controls. Under this array it should only list two elements by default, being your left and right joysticks. Click the plus icon at the head of the array to add a new control, which will generate a blank touch input with default values. For this video, I want to isolate our jump action to a specific button rather than to the entire screen like Unreal Engine Mobile does automatically, so we need to link this new control to that action. First, I'll set the button image. You can obviously use a custom image file if you have one available, but for our purposes today, I just used an image prepackaged with Unreal Engine touch controls. Now remember this because this is important. You only need to set image 2 to a specific image file when creating buttons. If both images are set, image 1 becomes the interactable component of a virtual thumbstick and image 2 becomes the background. With our image set, we now have a list of values that probably look super intimidating if this is your first time seeing them. I know it is because I felt that way too when I first got this far. Once you start breaking it down though, they're pretty easy to work with. The center value defines where in the viewport the input will appear, being defined on the X and Y axes. Set this however you'd like, it really depends on how you want your controls arranged on screen. Play around with the values to test where the controls feel most comfortable to use. Next is your visual size value. Pretty straightforward on this one, with it controlling how big your input will appear in game. This one isn't too difficult to figure out, just make sure your inputs are big enough for the player to easily use without them covering up too much of the screen, or obviously, covering other inputs. Moving over to your thumb size and interaction size values, these both work to measure how your player will be able to actually use your inputs. You can scale up both of these values to make the interactable space of your input larger, or scale it down to make your player have to be more precise when pressing on it. Something to keep in mind is that those don't affect the visual component of your input in any way, only the invisible interactable component attached to it. So if you scale these up without scaling up your visual size value as well, you'll have a teeny tiny button that works even when pressing nowhere near it. Finally, we've reached the end of this journey, skipping over the input scale with our input key bindings. This is where you add functionality to the input we've been working on by binding the touch controls to a specific key or gamepad input. So basically, our new touch input is just another step in Unreal's logic and is being treated as whatever key you set it for, the main input key and alternative input key. 
So if I set the input key to spacebar, we've just created a jump button because the spacebar is the default jump button in Unreal Engine. You can do so much more than a simple jump button though because whatever actions you've programmed into your keys or gamepad will work through touch controls. Something I saw a ton of online leading up to this video was people struggling to figure out how to create a button to perform a custom action on a touchscreen. The most common answer was to create a widget and to implement touch inputs through it by utilizing the on touch option for widget buttons. This doesn't work though, which people complain about online because widget buttons can have glitches when casting to an actor for complicated actions, something I personally experienced as I've said in developer vlogs before. They also can't be used for input actions that require the player to hold a button down and will execute immediately when pressed. Touch controls though are set to be an extension of whatever key or gamepad input you set it to. This means buttons implemented through touch controls can be held down, customized with delays or resets, and function entirely as intended. As I said before, as well as others have said online, developing for mobile on Unreal Engine is a crapshoot. There's never been documentation or solid tutorials to fully explain how to make them work until now. So hopefully this tutorial is beneficial to someone out there and it gave you the information you needed. That's honestly my goal with this tutorial, to help at least one up and coming mobile game dev and provide the answers they were potentially looking for. Thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment down below. It would really help out the channel and help me connect with you guys. Also be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't ever miss a new upload. If you had trouble following along with the video or something didn't work along the way, let me know in the comments I will help you work it out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.